Hey there, students, and we are live for some AP Euro review. All right, so let's go ahead and get this started. Now, remember that uh, you can go to crowdcast.io slash Tom Ritchie. That is going to get you into the broadcast. Okay, as far as if you're watching on YouTube, that's great. Keep watching on YouTube. That's awesome. Um, but uh, the people who are asking questions, crowdcast.io slash Tom Ritchie. Now, that's also where you can sign up for my 4 p.m. Art of Euro review. That is a premium review. OK, so the 4 p.m. Art of Euro review. That is a premium review. And then, of course, I've got another free public broadcast the night before Euro at 8 p.m. this evening. OK, also a salon review at 10 p.m. OK, so all of that is in the description. If you're on YouTube, you can see the art of euro the night before euro uh the salon reviews that are available uh, those are available there okay so also this is going to be a relatively short broadcast the main reason i'm here i want to tell y'all that i'm going to be doing a review on Marco Learning's channel, okay? So on Marco Learning's channel, I'm also gonna be heading over there. So you wanna go to Marco Learning, youtube.com slash Marco Learning. We've almost got them, let's push them over 3,000 subscribers right now, okay? But that's where I'm going to be in uh, at three o'clock, okay? So at about 2.50, 2.55, I'm gonna get off this broadcast. I'm gonna be heading over to Marco Learning's YouTube channel for another broadcast. Also want to make sure that y'all know that I've got a video that I just made on the AP Euro DBQ. Okay, so that is out there. Uh, just a quick uh, summary of the, uh, just a quick summary of the DBQ. Okay, so that's something, just a rubric overview. And we've got also me doing sample responses on Marco Learning's channel. Also remember my Romulus European History Review app. Romulus Euro is available at the App Store. Just a handy little trivia app, $1.99. Handy little way to study if you'd like to. Uh, so just, uh, just consider that. It's just trivia, but then again, that's gonna help you on your DBQ to be able to make those connections and like, oh, Oh, okay, I remember the the War of the Spanish Succession. That was Louis the Fourteenth, right? Uh, you know, Peter the Great, the Great Northern War, that sort of thing. Westernization. That was Peter the Great. So quizzing is a great way to get ready for the DBQ, which is going to require outside evidence. So please uh, consider going to the App Store or the Google Play Store and getting a hold of Romulus Euro or Romulus European History, depending on what it's called and what platform. So with that all kinds of great stuff going on we've got stuff in the you know in the description and of course i'm going to be on marco learning's channel at three o'clock check out the new rubric video okay so let's go ahead and get to our questions okay so it looks like here the seven years war okay mark a lot of y'all are going to be taking a push next year and the seven years war known in the united states as the french and indian war that is going to be a much more important war for u.s history what we want to understand about the seven Seven years war is even though there was some fighting on the continent frederick the great uh you remember the enlightened absolutist uh frederick the great uh was uh fighting the austrians uh there are some wars going on in the european continent but what you want to understand about this war is it was largely a colonial war some people refer to the seven years war as the first true world war because it's going on from india to north america to europe so you've actually got a war where people are fighting on different continents and of course the seven years war the result of the seven years war was that france lost its north american colonies to the british and of course this plays a role this uh this you know, it's kind of the beginning of the British really having like an outsized uh, influence in the global balance of power. Now, this is a factor when you see that France then uh, assist the United States in the American Revolutionary War. So France really to get back at Britain, because remember that 18th century warfare is largely focused on the balance of power, okay? 18th century warfare is largely focused on the balance of power. So we want to note um, that the this is a balance of power war having largely to do with colonies. And I would focus on what's going on in North America between uh, you know, between Britain 
and France. Okay, that's going to be the biggest thing. Of course, that's going to be of uh, something when we go into a push, which a lot of y'all are doing next year. That's going to be something that's important there. All right, a good piece of evidence to remember for nationalism that led to the revolutions of 1848. Now, I've got a five part video on my YouTube channel. If you go to my AP Euro review playlist, I've got a five part video on the revolutions of 1848. The first one goes into the revolutions of 1848 in general. And then the next three videos address the French Revolution of 1848, the revolutions of 1848 in the German states, and also the Italian. Italian Revolution of 1848. Now we want to note that generally these revolutions were uh, unsuccessful slash short-lived. Okay, so in France, even though, excuse me, even though France overthrew Louis Philippe um, and became a republic under the leadership of Louis Napoleon, a few years later Louis Napoleon proclaimed himself emperor. Okay, so we see here that uh, you know history repeat, you know, repeats itself. It's like first as tragedy, then as farce. You know, he is, uh, you know, being a lot like his uh, his predecessor, uh, Napoleon. So so with that, we want to know that that happened. Now, also uh, one piece of, of information that I've, I've always found kind of interesting is the way that the French Revolution of 1848 started. And I get into that in the video about the French Revolution of 1848 is that there were, you know, these folks that were having dinners to celebrate Washington's birthday. You know, Washington's birthday was an American holiday. And so these French uh, nationalists decided that, you know, these nationalists and liberals decided, you know what, we will have celebrations for Washington's birthday. So we're going to celebrate George Washington's birthday. And Louis Philippe uh, and his uh, prime minister, uh, Guizot, were like, oh, no, you're not. And they're like, oh, yes, we are. And that ends up with the overthrow of the French government. Now, note that when we look at the like the Hungarian Revolution of 1848, uh, that that's going to be something that the Russians come in and break that up. Um, so the Russians who were not experiencing a revolution of 1848 because Russia was, you know, pretty repressive regime and not as developed as these Central and Western European countries, they send an army in to help the Austrians crush that revolt. In the Ger in, in Germany, um, what you see is the Frankfurt Parliament meets, trying to unify Germany along liberal lines, and it ends up uh, that that does not work out. Okay, the Frankfurt Parliament ends up being a colossal failure because, uh, you know, the king of Prussia, who was offered to be a constitutional monarch, is like, I don't want your pig crown. OK. And so he's like, I'm not going to pick up a crown out of the gutter is what he says here. And so he's not going to accept that. So what we're seeing, what we're seeing there is, uh, you know, a pretty, uh, you know, like basically he resists this, okay? He says, no, I don't want to be a constitutional monarch under liberal terms. In Italy, um, this failed revolution of 1848 that was led by Mazzini and Garibaldi, um, this was, of course, uh, crushed through outside influence. Uh, France was instrumental in coming in and helping the Pope to crush this Roman Republic. So we want to understand that the revolutions of 1848, uh, in the first First video in the first video in that series, I go into the brass tacks where we've got this revolutionary movement and the governments are challenged. This conservative order is challenged, but largely the conservatives end up reasserting control. For example, all you know, Metternich fled Austria during the revolutions of 1848, but he was able to come back. Uh, there after it was over. All right. So then when we look at the Bismarckian system and Metternich, okay, so we associate Metternich with the concert of Europe. Okay. So we, we associate Metternich with the concert of Europe. Uh, the concert of Europe is this idea that European states are going to act in concert to stop rebellions within them. And they're also not going to go to war with each other. Now, one thing we want to know about the you know, when we're thinking about the, uh, you know, the concert of Europe, we also want to note that the Crimean War is something that is going to get uh, in the way of the concert, basically kind of in the concert of Europe, because you've got Britain and France um, that are fighting against Russia. So we see not really like a big continental war, but you really see the Crimean War results in the, uh, you know, it results in the 
uh, the end of this concert system with them all working together. Another thing is that the Crimean War does kind of pave the way for the unifications of Italy and Germany. Okay, so, so with that, we want to think in terms of that. So going from there, um, let's uh, let's then uh, think about Bismarck. Okay, so Bismarck is much more into uh, this real politic, whereas Metternich is very inflexible with conservatism. Uh, Bismarck is thinking, you know what? I'm going to unify Germany. But while Bismarck was, you know, a conservative at heart, as I say in my Bismarck rap, y'all might want to check out my SoundCloud. There is a Bismarck rap on my SoundCloud. There's also a Metternich rap. I've actually rapped about both of these people. Okay. So, uh, you know, I've got my Metternich rap, my Bismarck rap. Y'all want to hear the Metternich rap rap? Do we want to hear the Metternich rap? I can freestyle it for a little bit. OK, if y'all want to hear it, but I just want to know that y'all that y'all want to hear it. OK, so I'm, I'm, I'll be glad to freestyle it. OK, so the Metternich rap. All right. Uh, so let's see here. OK, do we want to hear? Yes, we want to hear the Metternich rap. All right. What up, Europeans? It's the ladies pick. Austrian Prince Clemens von Metternich. Aristocracy savior. I'm the man of the hour. Going to carefully restore Europe's balance of power. Eat nationalists for breakfast. Liberals for my dinner. Got it. Be conservative if you want to be a winner. I'm the coach man of Europe, so you better hold your horses because all the great powers are about to join forces. Napoleon thought he was too big to help. Uh, too big for El Bus, so we threw him on a boat straight to St. Helena. Threatened European peace, so we set him adrift. Shake the French Revolution off like Taylor Swift. Come on, Talleyrand, take a seat at the table because Europe needs a France that is strong and stable. There's no need to punish France. I just want to keep order and preserve the old 1791 borders. The liberals have ideas that they want to express, but I shut their mouths up when I censored the press. Stability between with and European states, it's the goal of this order that I'm trying to create. So join me in Vienna where a Congress is in session. Together we can stop the revolution from progressing this conservative order. No, it ain't gonna fall because I build coalitions like Trump builds walls. That's available on YouTube and SoundCloud. Now, I've also got a Bismarck rap that is available on my SoundCloud. That was actually professionally recorded and mixed. Uh, just search for, you can Google SoundCloud Tom Ritchie. Now, also, if anybody's not following me on Instagram, I'm going to be doing Instagram shout outs. Um, so make sure that uh, y'all are following on Instagram and we'll, uh, you know, we'll see about that. So who have we got there? Allie, Allie R. Welch and uh, Gina Lazarev and Will Arman. Thank y'all so much for the recent follows on Instagram. I very much appreciate that. So Bismarck is about real politic. Even though that he is a conservative at heart, he uses nationalism, liberalism, even peppers in a little socialism, okay? What the liberals call state socialism, where in order to undermine the Social Democratic Party, Bismarck originally tried to ban the Social Democratic Party, but what he decides to do later is outmaneuver them. Now, when you look at uh, my German unification series, which I would recommend, uh, Bismarck is engaged in this real politic where he says, look, I don't want the socialists to take over. So I'm going to put my own program in place where I'm going to put some old age pensions, accident insurance and health insurance. Now, the liberals, they're like, oh, you know, government. Uh, but Bismarck's like, this is what's going to keep the Social Democrats at bay, at least as far as he was concerned. Thank you, E. Claire. And uh, all right, uh, Parth, uh, my friend, uh, my friend Parth Vader over there, um, who is, uh, you know, who is uh, following me now on Instagram. Um, all in y'all, uh, Little Venus. All right. And then uh, let's see, Sophia Martinez, Liv. Um, let's see, Anj Park. And uh, we've got... Uh, Brianna Curry, and we've got uh, A. Lauren Official, the official one here, and D. Dog, four two zero six nine. All right, so wonder what those numbers mean. All right, so with that, uh, we've got that. So the Bismarck system. Remember, blood and iron. Bismarck's like, you know, you know, why not? Should I do the? Uh, should I do the Bismarck rap? You know, while while we're rapping. Uh, let's go ahead and perhaps while we're wrapping, we can just go ahead and just get the whole thing going here. Right. So so with that, let's see. Let me let me pull this up. I'm not uh, quite as. Yeah. So let me let me take a look here. Bismarck wrap. OK, let me get in here and see what I've got. 
All right. So I need to uh, go. OK, the Bismarck Rap instrumental. OK, let me make sure y'all want to hear it. Does everybody want to hear it? I don't want to do something y'all don't want to hear. OK, so make sure that, uh, you know, let's make sure that that is that that's clear. OK, let's make sure that that's clear. Y'all sure that y'all want to hear that one? OK, so I've got a Bismarck rap as well. If y'all are sure y'all want to hear it. OK, so I just I don't want I mean, I'm, I'm a man of the people. Right. I, I don't want to give y'all something y'all don't want to hear. OK, so with that, let's go ahead and rap about Bismarck. This one's on my SoundCloud, not on YouTube. But it is just search for Tom Richie, Richie SoundCloud. All right. Auto fun Bismarck warm water records. Looks like we've got some German states out there that need to be unified. Blood and iron more like blood and bars. Y'all listen to this. I'm the iron chancellor and I feel an obligation unify the German states under Prussian domination a conservative at heart. But I got a little trick. It's the politics of power. Call it real politic. An alliance with the liberals because I'm industry emphatic and they're secular. They like my culture cough against the Catholics and the social Democrats because I'm going to put it bluntly that Germany will never be a socialist country. I've got old age pensions and some accident insurance. If you're hurt at work, I've got your back. You've got my reassurance. Call it state socialism. Now the liberals want to hate. But without the working classes, we can't unify the state. The position of Prussia in Germany at this hour will not be determined by its liberalism, but its power. Great questions aren't decided by speeches or majorities. It's blood and iron. I'll use war to spread authority with the Austrians as allies. We took Schles, Big, and Holstein, then declared war on Austria. The next step, my grandees, and Prussia won in seven weeks. Austria wasn't any match. Then it's time to provoke France with the M's dispatch. Multi led and modern army armed with telegraphs and trains. France decisively defeated, gave up Alsace and Lorraine. After unifying Germany, then I really had some clout. Now it's 1890 and I'm out. All right. So there we go there. We've got, uh, you know, we've got, uh, you know, Bismarck and Metternich. So that's great when somebody asks a question that I can wrap not once, but twice. Uh, y'all remember, if y'all like that, a great way to show your appreciation, go to the app store, pick up Romulus Euro. You won't regret it, or at least I don't think you will. I won't regret it. <laughs> if you buy my app, I won't regret it. Okay. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, looking over this, thank y'all. Sounds like y'all like what you heard. And so with that, ladies and gentlemen, um, if you want me to go over, um, you know, the, the POV context, audience and purpose, um, go to, I'm going to show y'all how to find my guide on Google. Okay. So what you need to do is go to, uh, you know, after, um, let's see. So after you subscribe to Marco Learning's YouTube channel, Okay, have we pushed them over 3,000 yet? Um, thank you, Joey Harkins and Jack Cornog, Olivia B777, and Anna Hamill for the follows. Um, let's go ahead. Let's get uh, let's get Marco Learning over 3,000 subscribers. Um, I'm going to be going live from that channel. We've got Adrian H19, Kayla Coletta, um, Dude underscore Bros, um, then Melissa C. Para. Um, let's see, Marin M and Andrew Lee.22. Thank y'all so much. We're trying to get Marco Learning up there. Now, then we're going to go to Google. Okay, so go to POV, hold it down. I don't know how many of y'all have seen that YouTube video, POP, hold it down, but several. Uh, you know, several years ago, this video was pretty big on YouTube. And so when I made this 2014, when this video came out, and so I made my um, I made my guide here. It's called POV, hold it down. Okay. So POV, hold it down. And if you've never watched that YouTube video, you really should. It's hilarious. And it's got so much POV potential in there. Um, so make sure that you're, that you're thinking about that. And let's see how we're doing on Marco Learning's YouTube channel. Okay. And I'm going to go over this guide. Um, but Marco Learning, okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're going to push him above 3,000. Okay. So, uh, so we're going to let them know, get ready for 3K. All right. So they're going to, y'all are going to push us over. I trust y'all and y'all are going to be, uh, you know, you're going to be 
you know, happy that you did it. All right. Cause we're going to be going over there. I don't want to broadcast on a channel with less than 3000 subscribers. So let's get that going. So POV, hold it down. This is my, um, this is my, you know, guide on this basically to explaining documents on AP history exams. So point of view is not just identifying someone's occupation or social class, politics, nationality, age, gender, race, uh, that it is, uh, you know, basically we want to think about now note also a gender POV, just because it's a woman doesn't mean that you should necessarily go for a gender POV, but it should be considered. Okay. It should be considered. And so that's something that we want to think about. Is it going to be relevant? Okay. So as far as that goes, then we've got our reliability things here. We think about the historical situation or historical context, whatever we want to call this. But basically that's where you contextualize not the topic as a whole, but a single document. Okay. So for example, um, if we are you know, thinking about, for example, um, in my DBQs here, um, I've got some original DBQs. And in fact, you know, I need to, I need to put this into, I'm going to put this into the Crowdcast chat again, just in case anybody um, has not seen this. Okay. So I've got a link. I'm going to put this in the Crowdcast chat, crowdcast.io slash Tom Ritchie. Um, that's going to be there. Okay. That's in the Crowdcast chat. Um, so y'all can join us over there. And so, uh, so with that, you know what, I'll go ahead and I will update, uh, I will update YouTube as well. Okay. So we're going to go into this. Um, we're going to say here, let's see, I just got to get in there and uh, we're going to put this at the bottom here. Let's see, 2020 dbqs okay so 2020 dbqs we're going to put that at the very bottom there and that's going to be there for you okay so we should have that uh, updated so that should be if you refresh you should be able to see that those of you on youtube where you can download some dbqs now one of those uh what we can do here is we can uh we can get into let's see don't need the bismarck wrap anymore because we've been there so let me go into let's see dbq leq and we're going to um, bring in, let's see, our rework DBQs. And let's see, so we're going to pull up um, my DBQ on the conservative order. Okay. So for example, if we're looking at, if we're thinking about historical context, um, if you're looking at liberty leading the people, for example, you can do, you can put it in the historical situation or historical context. You contextualize the document by showing, you know, if you know something about the French Revolution of 1830, better known as maybe the Les Mis Revolution. Okay. If that's actually the one in Les Mis. Um, so that's something that you may find uh, that you may find helpful there that you would note. Now you could go. So going into historical context, you say this was painted during the French Revolution of 1830, which saw the overthrow of the Bourbon monarchy and the installation of Louis Philippe, the citizen king. OK, so that's something that you would, you know, or you could say she's holding a tricolor flag, which is the flag that France adopted during the French Revolution. So giving some historical context here. Uh, also, you can note that this painting was a painting that, uh, you know, that was a nationalist painting and you can go into how this exhibits nationalism. OK, so that's something that you can uh, that you can put into uh, into context there. And excuse me. So with that now, some people, you know, if you're really good, you might even know that Louis Philippe actually bought this painting and displayed it, but eventually returned it to Delacroix. So basically here's the painting. Now you need to describe it. You need to describe what's in there and make some specific references, but you also need to make sure that you are, uh, you know, so you're describing it, you're giving it some specific references and you know, then after you cite the document, you're going into it a little bit, uh, a little bit farther. OK, so make sure that you are, you know, that you're looking into that you're looking into that. So that's something. And then we think about, uh, you know, what was a you know, what was the purpose of these documents? So going through here, uh, you know, the Carlsbad decrees, you know, if somebody wrote something about the Burschenschaften or the purpose of the Carlsbad decrees was to, uh, you know, was to try to uh, reduce the influence of the Burschenschaften or if you don't remember Burschenschaften, 
first attack time. Oh, you know, this is something that's a hard word to remember. So you could say to in, to limit the influence of student fraternities um, that were advocating liberalism and nationalism. So the point of the Carlsbad decrees is to limit the influence of these student fraternities, or if you want to know the precise term, first Oh gosh, this is making me, speaking German makes, I don't know, I feel a sneeze coming on. It might not come on, but it might come on. Okay, so so we'll see about that. I think it left, okay? But, uh, you know, my rule, my general rule is if I sneeze, I also dab. So what's the audience? Audience tends to be kind of tough for people, but thinking about how the intended audience may have, uh, you know, may have affected this. Think about this. You talk to your friends differently than you talk to your parents, don't you? And the purpose seems to be the easiest one for people. You know, it's like the purpose of this document is, okay? So what I did, sometimes you put two of them together. So when I say the purpose of this document was to limit the influence of version chapter, and you see what I did there? I'm going to purpose and I'm going into the historical situation slash context, okay? So that's something that we want to, that we want to note here, okay? So as far as that, uh, as far as that goes, uh, you know, getting into uh, getting into that. So then before reading, OK, what do you expect this person to say based on the source information while reading? Is this person saying what you expected after reading? Does this person benefit from what was said? And think about Nietzsche. Nietzsche is all about the will to power. OK, so Nietzsche being uh, into the will to power that essentially people generally say things that help them advance in life or gain something find out what someone has to gain, you'll be able to figure out POV. So let's think about this. So for example, like, you know, if I buy Tom Ritchie's Romulus Euro app, you know, Tom Ritchie gains something from it. So when Tom Ritchie's promoting this app, it may or may not be any good. I may or may not find it helpful. Tom Ritchie, you know, wants to, uh, wants to try to make a little money in the app, in the app store. Now, the thing is, you know, these people can't be wrong. We got a 10 in education. Let's see what we can do to get that, uh, you know, to get that to number one tonight. All right. So with that, of course, that's POV me. All right. POV me. All right. Version shaft. OK, so with that, um, then we go to after reading that they benefit. And so when I say buy my app, it's a great app. You know, I mean, now, if I say AP Euro is the most important class you'll ever take in high school, you'll say he teaches AP Euro. He benefits from it. But then again. What if the AP bio teacher? And to switch to water, make y'all make sure y'all are staying hydrated, kids, especially if you're talking for several hours a day. So with that, if the AP bio teacher says that AP European history was the most valuable course I ever took in high school, that point of view is very credible because here's someone who has nothing to gain from it. And this is what that AP bio teacher saying. Now, of course, you could say that Richie might have paid him off, OK, or her. But uh, Richie might have paid that person off. Now, again, I'm making a reference to this video, you know, where Donna Godot in this video, P.O.P. hold it down. All I know is my side of the story. I can't tell no other story. And so here's the thing. Everybody tells their side of the story. Let me see how many of y'all seen this video before, you know, where she's like, barely i can see barely you know i'm legally blind you know that kind of thing so i did not drive no getaway car uh you know so have you seen the who's seen the pop okay so as far as that goes uh yeah so that's one thing as mr good good is saying here be ready for multiple dbq topics tomorrow because ap government had several prompts okay so be ready for uh, of course it's not going to matter since you're not planning on collaborating with other people because that's the one thing that the college board actually defines as cheating so a few of y'all seen that video. Let's make sure all of y'all see that video because it's hilarious. OK, but basically you know, it's like P.O.P. Hold it down. OK, so y'all y'all want to do yourselves a favor and watch that. Uh, watch that video. OK, that's something that I think everybody uh, should do at some point today. OK, so with that, let's go back to P.O.V. Hold it down. OK, now, Talia, my problem with saying biased is you generally, when you say biased, you don't end up clarifying how it's biased. So when you say, bi it's kind of like when people say document one says, document two says, you know, instead of identifying the document when they're like document one says, uh, you know, they don't humanize the document. 
And so when you say bias, it's one of those things here. Yeah, but Vicki, you're not going to pick the prompt, okay? Yeah, the government students yesterday, there were several test versions and the student did not pick what test version they got. So as far as this goes, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, all I know is my side of the story. I can't tell no other story. So people generally say exactly what you want them to say. They advocate for themselves, their beliefs, and their friends usually. Now, there's one guy in this video while she's saying she didn't drive. I did not drive, no getaway car. Now, when she says I'm legally blind, I cannot see. And she's, you know, they ask, well, can you see it all? And she says, I can see barely. All right. And so the thing is, she's saying I'm legally blind. But the thing is, what is legally blind? She's like, I can see barely. Okay. But she's trying to minimize her ability to see because she says, I can't drive a car. How am I going to drive a car? Legal. Now there's also a remix. Okay. The thing is what y'all got to understand here uh, is there's also a remix that is, uh, you know, POP, hold it down. There is a remix here um, that uh, let's see. So POP, hold it down remix okay and that one is just uh yeah so so this one yeah the auto tune remix this was uh you know and almost a million people have just watched that remix okay but this is i mean i'm telling you that if you watch this video you will understand pov um that that's one of those things that watch this video you can understand pov what is the tone of the document now i've also gotten this document uh, that when we think about special cases, such as an eyewitness, okay, now I'm going to put this, I'm going to put a direct link um, into, uh, you know, into the YouTube chat here. Let's go ahead and get in a, oh, somebody gave me $3.90. Thank y'all so much. Okay, somebody did a little super chat. Thank y'all so much for that. Now, speaking of that, for a little more than $3.90, uh, let's see, POV, hold it down, POV, hold it down. Remember that I've got the Art of Euro uh, premium stream. You can go to crowdcast.io slash Tom Ritchie and you can sign up for the Art of Euro stream, which is going to be at 4 p.m. today. OK, that's going to be at 4 p.m. today. Um, thank whoever gave the super chat. OK, so with this, mom, I love you. Mom, I love you. P.O.P hold it down. I tell it's just, it's still in my head years later. Okay. So with that, uh, it's just, you do yourself a favor. So an eyewitness, they could be more reliable. They've got a direct experience with the situation. Retrospective, like where we're talking about something that was published later. Um, that's something that, you know, people, a lot of times they forget some details. Maybe they intentionally altered some details to glorify themselves. Like when Bismarck writes later, I always knew that we were going to need to have a war with France. He's writing that after the war with France. He's making himself look smart. An anonymous POV. Why? You know, why, why is the person, excuse me, why is the person anonymous? Why are they not identified? A lot of times people are trying to avoid negative consequences. Okay. They're trying to avoid negative consequences. A foreign observer, maybe they could have an objective or disinterested perspective, or they may have some sort of ethnocentric bias where, for example, in my enlightened absolutism DBQ, one of the documents is from the French ambassador um, to Russia. And what I'm thinking about is France. France had their laws were set up where a woman could not reign as queen in France. You couldn't have a reigning queen. Catherine de' Medici uh, was not actually the reigning queen of France. She manipulated her sons. So France could not have a woman as the monarch. So I thought about that and I was like, you know, his POV since he's from France. Now, see, this is where Tali, I wouldn't say he's biased. I will explain how he's biased. I will show his bias rather than just saying the word. So I'll say that since this gentleman is a Frenchman, um, since this gentleman's a Frenchman, he's from France, which is a country that, uh, you know, did not have queens that reigned. So he could have been, you know, he could have the idea of a woman as queen may have been repugnant to him. And that may be why he's giving her a largely negative assessment audience consideration. So basically, if it's a private letter to a friend or a diary or journal, this is somebody that does not necessarily want uh, you, or they, they don't need to posture for anybody. They're typically in these kinds of situations, they're giving their honest opinion on something. And then 
a diary or journal on the per you know or posthumously published copernicus revolutional revolutions of the heavenly spheres copernicus is like you know what i want to put this out there but i don't really want to be burned at the stake as a heretic after all he was a priest and so he published it posthumously a lot of people who do this they do it to avoid punishment or it may be someone published it for them now a public speech or what's called an open letter which is a letter to someone but it's it's released publicly um this is something that uh, someone's performing for an audience okay um, or an official government document now don't just assume that government documents are uh you know necessarily more reliable oh my i keep checking this here uh that somebody made this account like on twitter that's a instead of ap underscore trevor it is ap underscore underscore trevor um i don't know who did this but i just keep checking to see if there are some new tweets it's like a parody account and it's just it's pretty funny there on twitter you're welcome to uh you're welcome to follow me as well um at tom ritchie on twitter all right so with that ladies and gentlemen let's uh let's keep going here and oh let me do a few instagram shout outs and I'll do Instagram shout outs for people who are following at Marco Learning, okay? So follow at Marco Learning. I can do some shout outs for y'all too. Goofy Grape, uh, thank you, Sophie Fernandez, King Thomas 84. Um, let's see, Michaela, um, thank you for it. Uh, let's see, No Limit Pops, Mario Party 666, uh, okay. Um, and uh, ooh, it's Julie. Well, Julie, I'm glad you're here. Um, let's see, Angelina in Hiv, and uh, let's see, uh, Yash Kamdar 824. Thank y'all so much for the support. Uh, Melissa C. Para, thank you so much for the new follow here. Okay. And so, uh, you know, any of y'all that are following Marco Learning, um, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and shout out there too as I wrap up this broadcast in a few minutes. And remember, I'm going to Marco Learning's YouTube channel at the conclusion of this. Okay. So, Marco Learning's YouTube channel. Um, we want to make sure that uh, we are, let's see, are they above 3,000? And we've got it. We've got it. We've got them above 3,000. Okay. So make sure y'all are also following Marco Learning at, uh, you know, Marco Learning on Instagram as well. Okay. So uh, let's see, follower screenshots, please. Okay. Asking them to send me some screenshots of the new followers on that account. So we're going to be heading over to Marco Learning and thank y'all that I don't have to broadcast from a channel with less than 3,000 subscribers. Now note here, Marco's also got some great videos like you see here, John's gonna talk about overcoming test anxiety. Um, John's the founder and CEO of Marco Learning. Got some videos about what's cheating, what's not, how to get ready, okay? So these are some things here that I think are gonna be very useful to you as you, uh, you, know, as you prepare for your exam journey. So don't use the term biased and especially don't say he's biased. Remember that attribution by itself is not POV. Just saying what the person is, you've got to say how it affects, okay? Of course she'd say that since she's a woman. Don't say that, okay? As a woman, she would be more inclined to support equal pay because it would result in her making more money. So I wouldn't just say as a woman, she's biased, okay? Now, remember that POV plus is not a substitute for describing the document's content. Descri you'll see that in my sample essays that I've got available on my website, uh, you know, on my AP Euro DBQ page, that you'll see that when I'm doing the POV cap, POV plus, hip, hippo, happy, whatever we want to call it, um, that it should follow your description of the document's content. So describe the content of the document, put it in parentheses, and then parenthetical citation and, and identify the document specifically. Don't just say document two says, uh, you know, so go in and, uh, you know, this is not a substitute for describing the document's content. So make sure you're following, not replacing it. So describe the document, then put your parentheses and then do your POV plus analysis. Don't assume that visuals are necessarily neutral. Um, for example, Eugene Delacroix, he wasn't neutral. That was a nationalist painting. He wanted to support the French Revolution of 1830. And then I've got some examples of point of view that you can go into there. So that is POV, hold it down, okay? So, may, oh, looks like Marco Learning's got lots of new Instagram followers. Um, we've got, uh, you know, let's see, uh, Aubrey. Yeah, Aubrey's always liking stuff. Christy Haroon, um, Diana, 
I'm Diana Dayan, and uh, let's see, FS not Zayana. All right, and then we've got here, um, Cruz Di Diana, Cruz Di, let's see, Cruz Diana, HPP underscore Doe, Kayla Coletta. Thank y'all. You know, y'all are following Marco Learning, and we're about to go to Marco Learning's channel there. Uh, Giselle Valadez and yours, Bobley Mads, and uh, James, James Paul, who's always at these things. It looks like James has taken a push and AP Euro. Jessica Aguilar, thank y'all so much for the follows. And uh, it's her lot. It's her lie. Hurley, her lie, Hurley. Um, Quaymac 37 and Pastille, Pastille, uh, D Dog. Uh, oh, D Dog 42069. You're all, all over the place. Okay. Samuel Q, XX Man. Yeah, Samuel Q, thank y'all. And let me do one last round of shout outs on my Instagram account. Uh, thank y'all so much for uh, for helping me out there. And uh, Churro Sanchez uh, Jr. and Noe No Noam Mivi Noam Mivi. All right, which uh, yes, soul searching, but the field keeps passing by. All right, so hopefully the field doesn't pass by tomorrow, or it passes by in a good way. All right, so with that, thank you, thank you very much, Mads, for the follow and Cruz Diane. A lot of the same people, Cruz Diane. All right. And then, uh, yeah, so goofy. Great. Thank y'all so much. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I am about to head over to Marco Learning's YouTube channel. OK, so we're going to Marco Learning's YouTube channel. And Victoria has something here uh, that. Uh, yeah. So Victoria will talk about, you know, we can do that. I think, Victoria, don't you come to the uh, to the salons? Y'all keep in mind, too, those of you who are here. I have got a salon review tonight at 10 p.m. That's limited to 30 people. You see, there are hundreds of people in these public sessions. The salon review tonight is limited to 30 people. And those those spots are going to fill up. Let me see how many spots we have left in tonight's salon review. For more information, crowdcast.io slash Tom Ritchie. Now, the salon review is limited to um, just uh, 30 people that sign up. And right now we've got uh, we've got um, 13 in. So that means we've got 17 spaces left right now. It filled up last night. I figure it'll fill up tonight. Um, the Art of Euro, which is going to start at four. Make sure to go ahead and buy into that. That's going to start at four o'clock p.m. Eastern. So I'm about to head over now to Marco Learning's YouTube channel. Um, and then I'm going to, of course, be live tonight on my YouTube channel on um, the Art of Euro at 8 p.m. So hopefully y'all come on with me and let's uh, let's go ahead. And yeah, but Vicky was in the salon last night. The salons are great because it's a small group. People get their questions answered, all of that kind of stuff. You know, I love the public chats, but I really enjoy being able to work with a small group of people. So with that, I'm going to go over to Marco Learning. We're going to start at three o'clock Eastern. So we'll see y'all there. And remember, I'll be back on this channel at 8 p.m. Eastern and uh, looking forward to that for the night before Euro. It's going to be it's going to be a great time. And remember, Breakfast with Richie tomorrow at 10 a.m. OK, 10 a.m. Breakfast with Richie, 1 p.m. Lunch with Marco. OK, so I'm going to be going doing both channels tomorrow. So make sure you're following my channel and Marco Learning's channel. It is always a pleasure.